Hi everyone, welcome to another video of Roman Just Codes. I'm Roman, and in this second video, I'll be wrapping up the coding for the creation of a simple splash screen as an Angular reusable component. Let's continue. If you recall in the previous video, I created the basic splash screen component and layout, and now I'll be adding the animation. I'll add the Angular Directive, ng style, so the CSS transitions can be driven by a property from Angular. The left CSS property of the app splash screen will be driven by the window width property. Let's now proceed to add that property in the TypeScript for this component. I'll start by adding the property window width of type string. I'll also create a Boolean flag called show splash with an initial value of true. This will determine the visibility of the splash screen in the DOM. So the trick to the animation is give it an initial delay using JavaScript's set timeout. And after the delay, you animate the left position on the negative axis, hence the minus sign. So it moves out of the screen. The window width is expressed as a string using the window's inner width property and by adding the px or pixel suffix. For now, the delay will be 3 seconds. You see now that the splash disappears after 3 seconds, but without the animation. Since we said we'll do the transition in CSS, that's exactly where we will go and add the missing piece. In the app splash screen CSS, I'll add the transition property, which requires the DOM property that we will animate on, in this case, the left property, and for how long the animation will last. In our case, half a second. Save and refresh, and there you'll see the animation sliding on the left property, on the negative axis, out of view. I'll test it on a larger viewport so you see that it will pick up the window's inner width at the time the animation executes. Nice. Let's continue. So far, so good. But there's one issue. The splash screen component after the animation, it still lingers on the side of the screen and we don't want that. We want it so after the delay and after the half a second animation, it removes itself from the screen. That's the reason for that extra property called show splash that will flip to false causing the ng-if directive to remove it from the DOM when false. For that, I'll create an additional set timeout that will last exactly the same time as the sliding animation, half a second. Right after, I'll flip the show splash property to false, which causes the splash to be removed from the layout. Notice I'm using the same duration for the CSS animation transition as my internal delay. That way it waits the appropriate time for removing the element. Let's verify that. Animation done. Gone from the DOM. Good. The project can be considered done at this point. If you just want a simple splash screen that slides to the left after 3 seconds with a half a second animation. But what if we want to make it configurable? Change the animation duration, the delay of the splash, the direction in which it animates. How about fading instead of sliding? Let me show you how. I'll start by creating a new file called splash animation type. This will hold an enum that will have three values, which correspond to the type of animation that I want my splash screen to have. Slide left, slide right, and fade out. Going back to my splash screen logic, I'll do some refactoring and adding new properties. I'll add a property called opacity change, type number, with a default value of 1, meaning fully visible. 
another property called splash transition, which will hold the CSS transition style as a string. Since I want to make this an encapsulated reusable component, I have to create some entry point properties as inputs so my users can supply values to it. I'll add an input called animation duration, type number with a default of 0.5 or half a second. Another input called duration for the splash screen visible duration, also type number and default value of three. And last but not least, an input called animation type, type splash animation type, which is my newly created enum with default value of slide left. Let's refactor the code in the ng on init. The outer set timeout will have a delay calculated by the duration provided, times 1000 milliseconds. So whatever value I pass will have to be in seconds. The inner set timeout then will have a delay calculated by the animation duration times 1000 milliseconds also must be provided in seconds. I'll create a local variable called transition style. I'll do a switch statement that will switch to the corresponding logic depending on the animation type provided by the user. I'll add all my three cases and a default case just in case. For the slight left option, the transition will be as before, the inner width of the screen negative along the left property plus the animation duration provided by the user. The default case will be the same as the slide left option. For the slide right option, the transition will be the same, except the value will be positive, so it moves the opposite direction. And for the fade out option, the transition will be on the opacity property instead of the left. Now let's apply these new properties on the markup. Along with the left property, we will also animate on the opacity and supply the corresponding transition. I'll remove it from the CSS since it will be provided programmatically. However, I'll add the opacity property here to avoid confusion as to where it comes from. I'll rebuild just in case and refresh. You don't notice any change. Why? Because the values being fed are the default ones I set in the new properties. The same that were there before. Let's change those via the inputs and see how it behaves. Here's my app splash screen component. I'll supply a value for the animation type other than the default slide left. Let, let's go with slide right. Nice. Let's add a different splash duration, two seconds. Three seconds is the default.
How about the animation duration of three? Super slow, but that proves to us that it's working. Let's change it back to left. Now for the final test, let's try the fade out option. Change it by adding more to the value to make it quicker. Perfect. Change one more value to make it quicker. Perfect. Remember that passing no values makes the default values to kick in. So it makes it flexible and allows users to use the component right out of the gate. I'm satisfied with what we've accomplished. Hope you guys learned something in the course of these videos. Creating a simple splash screen as a reusable yet configurable Angular component that you can use in all your apps. That's it for this video, so please stay tuned for more upcoming videos. Hit the subscribe button to stay updated, and please like this video if you found it useful. Thank you so much for watching.